enzymes are held together, they have a three-dimensional shape, right? An enzyme is a protein, and a protein is amino acid, so it's amino acid sequence. Then because of those, because of the negative and positive charges and all that, and the hydrogen bonding and stuff like that, that's on those different amino acids, they fold in a certain way. So that's secondary shape, it's secondary shape. And it's ter tertiary shape is its three-dimensional shape. And it's that three-dimensional shape that defines its function, just like my hand. My hand has five fingers, one thumb, four fingers, in this specific arrangement. If my thumb were here, I still anatomically have four fingers and a thumb, I will not have the function, okay? So that's the importance of form and function, shape and function, anatomy and physiology. That's how it works. If you ever wanna know what an animal should eat, look at its digestive physiology, look at its apparatus. It, it tells you, you don't have to do any studies. So form and function. So the three-dimensional shape of an enzyme is uh, how, well, how it does its job. Now that three-dimensional shape is dependent on two things, pH and temperature. Okay, so every enzyme has an optimal pH at which it operates at, and it has an optimal temperature. All of our enzymes in our body, except for our white blood cells, optimally function at around 98.6, around 98, plus or minus, okay? Uh, in, centigrade, in centigrade, that's around 36.8 up to 36 point, uh, 37.2, around there. Okay, so there's an area there which they operate function. This is, this is perfect. That's what we call normal body temperature. That's the temperature. Now, once it uh, gets up, once that temperature gets up to in centigrade, yeah, 46 or 47, yeah, up around there, uh, it, it, it becomes permanently, loses its shape. Now, and in Fahrenheit, it's 119. So if you get up to 15, 18, 110, okay, temporarily the enzyme loses its shape and it's not functional. Then you let it cool off, it still regains its shape and it's functional. And that's what we do when we dehydrate food. When we dehydrate it, we're bringing it up to a temperature that is not destroying the enzymes. However, it tastes cooked. It tastes cooked. So you can actually enjoy that kind of flavor. So, but yeah, that's what, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what it does. It's very, very important to understand that. But once you get to 119 or whatever it is, 47.6 or whatever it is, um, it's permanently gone. Well, 119, you know that water boils at 212. And in centigrade, water boils at 100. So if you're boiling or steaming, you will have food that has lost its enzymes and it has lost its biochemical charge. It has lost something that we call, it's very indefinable, but we call it life. Because life is energy flowing in, in, in an organism. And once that energy stops flowing, and how do we know energy is flowing? Well, we know energy in biological organisms is measured by electrons, right? So we do EKGs to see your heart, to look at the rhythm, the, the, uh, the, the uh, electrical outflow of your heart, uh, uh, l electrical patterns that your heart is producing, electrical pattern your brain is producing, your muscles, whatever it is, because we are electromagnetic uh, beings on a physical level. Anyway, so when that line is flat, it's over, right? Okay, so that's it because there's no more electron flow. Okay, so when you do this, the enzymes and all the other stuff are gone. So now the food no longer has life. So yeah, you're getting X amount of carbohydrates, X amount of protein, X amount of, or X, Y, and Z amount of fats. Uh, and you're even getting uh, some of the phytonutrients that haven't been degraded, but most of them have. And you're getting some of the, uh, and the minerals. The one thing you're not getting, life, energy. And life is energy. When you run out of energy, the game is over. Okay, so steaming, boiling, is going to render the substances that you brought into the kitchen dead. 